Hi, greetings, fellow Hoovians. Hoovian Queen here. I've had a good week so far. Well, look at the 11 Dr. Era now continues on with the um, I mean, with the Rebel Flesh. The Taurus is caught in the first waves of a solar tsunami and materializes on Earth in the 22nd century. The 11 Dr. Amy and Rory find themselves on a remote island where a factory house and a former castle monastery pumps a valuable, highly corrosive acid, acid to the mainland. <clears throat> The skeleton crew of the factory uses a self-replicating fluid called the flesh, which they create doppelgangers of themselves, colloquially called gangers. The, tr the crew control the gangers from, a s from special harnesses to operate in the hazardous environment of the factory. The doctor, initially posing as a weatherman, fears the worst part of the solar tsunami will strike when the solar-powered factories will strike the solar-powered factories soon, threatening those still remaining, and offers to take the crew in his TARDIS. The foreman, Randa Cleaves, refuses to shut down the factory until she receives an order from the mainland. As the solar storm begins, the doctor races to disconnect the solar collector. The tsunami hits the castle, throwing the doctor off the tower and knocking everyone inside unconscious for an hour. When the crew awaken, they find themselves out of the control beds with no sign of the gangers. They soon discover that the gangers have gained sentience, and two gangers are amongst them, posing as Cleaves and Jennifer when the two give themselves away by turning pale white. <clears throat> Jennifer also exhibits the ability to contort and stretch her body well beyond human limits. The Jennifer Ganger struggles with her new identity and befriends Rory, who has begun to demonstrate an emotional attachment to her. The Cleves Ganger works in secret with the other Gangers to try to kill the real humans, as the human Cleves plans to kill the Gangers. The Doctor attempts to reunite the two sides, but fails when the human Cleves <clears throat> kills the Ganger. The gangers plan an attack, and the doctor accuses Cleves of killing a living being, which Cleves refuses to acknowledge. The ganger Jennifer hunts her human counterpart to kill her. The doctor determines that in a monastery, the safest place to be is the chapel, and directs everyone there. The gangers, and as the protection suits, bear down on the capital. Against Amy's wishes, Rory separates from the group to find Jennifer. In the chapel, Amy and the doctor discover a ganger version of the doctor. Bum, bum, bum. So let's take a look at some continuity surrounding this episode. The Almost People confirms that the Doctor came to the base to examine the flesh in its early stage in order to humanely sever its connection to Amy, who was replaced by a ganger avatar prior to the beginning of the series. <clears throat> He's also performing pregnancy scan on Amy, which, as before, cannot come to a conclusion whether she's pregnant. The Eye Patch Lady also makes another brief appearance to Amy, similar to those in Day of the Moon and the Curse of the Black Spot. Her identity is revealed to the Almost People, and she plays a larger and she plays a larger part in A Good Man Goes to War and The Wedding of River Song. So now let's take a look at the production of this episode, beginning with the writing. Matthew Graham was, original, <coughs> was originally to write a single episode for the previous series, but withdrew because he did not have enough time to write the script. He then received an email from the showrunner Stephen Moffat, asked him to write for the next series. Graham agreed. When the two met, Moffat said he would like the episodes to lead into the mid-series finale and that it should deal with avatars that rebel. Initially worried this may seem too similar to the film Avatar, Graham went on to create the flesh. Graham wanted the gangers to be scary, but not monsters who wanted to take over the world for the sake of it. He wanted them to appear relatable to the audience as they were humans who deserved rights. Moffat suggested that the Avatars work in a factory, attempting to make it differ from other factories featured in Doctor Who. Graham proposed to set the story in a monastery, an idea of which Moffat greatly approved. The monastery was inspired by the film The Name of the Rose, but the gangers were influenced by The Thing. Graham described it as The Thing in the context of The Name of the Rose. In the early drafts of the script, there were so many copies of people running around the place, which made the story too confusing. Scram with the production crew work to make it more rational. The episode also contains a subplot in which Rory helps and protects Jennifer as she is scared and affected by the gangers, which proved a twist in Amy and Rory's relationship. After Karen Gillan enjoyed the twist, Amy had previously Amy had previously always had Rory in the palm of her hand, and a different side of the character was shown as she experienced the same emotions Rory felt when she seemed interested in the doctor. After Arthur Darville also, also thought it was a chance also thought it would give her a chance to man up and be a hero by protecting someone. Aww. And now finally, on to filming and effects. 
The read through for the Rebel Flesh of the Almost People took place on November 12, 2010. It was then filmed around late November and early December. The cool temperatures at the time were challenging and caused discomfort. The crew were concerned with, the, with that the cast, particularly the three lead actors, would fall ill as their costumes were not designed for such weather conditions. Even so, the cast remained healthy. Scenes outside and inside the monastery were filmed at Kefirli Castle, previously used in Doctor Who in the End of Time and the Vampires of Venice. The actors each replayed their respective gangers, with prosthetics applied to their faces from the duplicates' faces or reverted to the original material of the flesh. Moffat wanted the gangers to appear like eyeball matter, with small capillaries running through them. For the scenes in which both the character and their respective gang were in the same shot, a double for each of the actors was used. Most of the shots showed either their, the character or their ganger speaking over their counterpart's shoulder, as only the backs of the double's heads were made to look similar to the actors. The episode also contained several tracks of contemporary music. In the beginning, when Amy and Rory are playing darts in, in the TARDIS and the Doctor runs a pregnancy scan on Amy, the song Supermass Black Hole by Muse is playing in the background. Gangers also play You Don't Have to See You Love Me by Dusty Springfield. So overall, I think this is a pretty unique episode and things definitely take a turn for, well, let's say the scary in the next part, which we'll be able to get next time. So, yeah. So overall, I give The Rebel Flesh four sonic screwdrivers out of five. When you tune in tomorrow, I mean, tune in next week as we tickle the conclusion of this two-parter with The Almost People. Well, hope you enjoyed that review. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share around, don't forget to subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified by my upload videos. And if you want to help support this channel, then be sure to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in the description below. Anyway, so until next time, this is Hoobie and Queen saying, Oh my giddy aunt! When I say run, run! I have a reciprocity in the neutron flow. Would you like a jelly baby? Fantastic! Allons-y! Geronimo! Bow ties are cool, fezzes are cool, and Stetsons are cool.